All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. (laughs) Welcome to episode 412 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. This is a bonus episode. We only do bonus episodes for important people and important things. And Mr. Peter Chris is important, and so is Andy Moyen. Andy, no, don't do <laughs> you are, because you're always here. You're always willing to share your experiences. Um, you know, you get to go to some of these events being out in the Boston area. Um <laughs> You know, so you're on the East Coast and it makes life easier because so much of the good stuff happens on the East Coast. And last night, Peter Chris guested for three songs at the Sisters Doll Show at the beautiful. I love the cutting room. I've only been there the one time, but at the cutting room in New York City, um, just down the road from Madison Square Garden. But I think it's like uh, four blocks down yeah. from Penn. Yeah, something like that. Four to six blocks, something like that. Yeah. I'm not it's, a New Yorker, so it's kind of. <laughs> no, nah, it's it's a it's a nice little walk. Um, I, I will never stay at the Pen again. I made that mistake twice, um, but it's a nice area of the city as well. And I saw, you know, before we talk about the the sisters dolls and uh, Peter last night, you did your usual tour, don't you? You know, you I, I saw <laughs> you at the uh, Dress to Kill corner, and you were pissed. What did they do? Well, I. I... I wouldn't say the full tour I did, just just a couple spots. But uh, yeah, I told anybody you wanted to meet up there, and then you know, there's a it's called Days something barbecue, Chelsea. It's right next door, right across the street. So get something to eat, and uh, you know, every time every time I do go there to New York, I gotta go to Just to Kill. That was my first album ever given to me. It was released on my birthday. Yada yada. It's a whole thing. So uh, every time I go there, and I always bring. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's kind of a silly joke now. Uh, I bring a you know cleaning cloth and I clean the pole. <laughs> and th- every time I go back, it seems to get worse and worse over there. Like now, now they have like you know they dug out and I get it. They dug out things for you know uh, handicap so they can handicap go fast. You know, better. Now they put a the the beeper thing to go across the street on the actual pole. Now it was on the other side now it's all there they got a bunch of scalfies up now but some jackass like spray painted the pole now it's just like oh my god i can't believe it like why isn't there some kind of thing from new york or whatever they do to society thing saying this album cover was done here i was just so like ah yesterday <laughs> about it you know so so that that's the story with that and then of course Right there, is when I showed you when you went the phone booth, you know, like, yep. you know the the super or, or, or where the or where the phone booth was, right? Because it, yeah, isn't yeah, it just yeah. like concrete marks of where it used to be. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, they have it. Actually, they had it. If you saw the second video, they, they actually have it blocked off. They don't want you to go downstairs. <laughs> I'm from New England. I don't care. I just went downstairs anyways, and I showed where it was, and I couldn't even remember off the top of my head exactly where it was. I don't know why. I just like, oh, this is the area. It could have been here. Here or this spot, but it's all in the same general area. So it was just for fun, you know. But uh, we didn't go search around that much. It, it was like blazing. It was like, I mean, we've gone from like 50s, 60s to like 90s. And yeah. it was really humid uh, in New York and New England, throughout New England, the last Saturday, Sunday. So it was bizarre. And then by the time we got home, it was like 60. <laughs> yeah, it, it was Everything pretty was like, warm what? the year that he did. The, the full show at the cutting room, which was what 2017 now, it's a long time ago. God, is it five <laughs> years already since he yeah. lasted a full concert? Last night doesn't count as you know a, a concert because you know he was with his boys, the, the sister dolls, um, you know, doing them a solid. He loves those guys, so you yeah. know, it was it's really cool that you know, as a mentor, as a you know, a, a godfather of rock and roll in some ways, that Peter Chris is able to put some guys you know young musicians they're not that young now you know five years later but uh to have had them under his wing and just to care about them they've been out in the states doing a tour and more power to those guys coming out here they've been playing vegas they've done a few shows in los angeles haven't had a chance to get down there um there's the full itinerary 
but it's great for them, you know, breaking out of uh, Corona land and Australia got hit and locked down hard. All those states in Australia, you know, it, it really had a massive impact on people's lives, not less those who passed. But, you know, in terms of trashing another economy, America, Europe, you're not alone. Uh, Australia really batten down the hatches you know to keep as much of it out as possible so these musicians are getting out and touring again you know and starting to rebuild because you lose momentum when you're a young band and it's been two years so it's great that peter was willing to you know put out put them on blast and say hey these guys are coming out here i'm gonna get up on stage uh so tell us about the show you know and everything uh that kind of goes with last night at the cutting room yeah now the cutting room is strange to me personally because i've never been to like a rock place or or like that and, and they have tables and they basically you have to sit down <laughs> i think it's kind of weird i mean it was like, oh, yeah, we're getting a little bit older, so it feels good to have the seats. Yeah, it might, but it, I wonder how it feels to the band. You know, they're up there rocking his, yeah, his, rocking their hearts out, and they look down, and they're like, everybody's sitting. Because, basically, you're in seats. <laughs> oh, you're at a table. You're in, you know, you know, in seats. It, it kind of drives that. I, I never get that concept. So I feel bad. I feel bad for the band. But I got to tell you, those guys, those guys, kids, what, you want to, they're, what they must be in their, what, mid-20s now? Mid-20s, yeah. be in the, 20s now they're, they're, but, they're uh, still kids to me they're anything under 30 you're still a freaking kid <laughs> yeah but they were like straight ahead rock they have that kind of like to me to have a, like the kind of 80s vibe to them um but you know it's heavy vibes they get some nice hooks uh i like that 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 song the mirror mirror black mirror i told them that i saw them uh we saw them outside uh they were hanging out with taking pictures with people and, and stuff like that very humble very, uh, I met them at, very friendly very personable yeah and, uh, you know, their dad, too. They, I think that their dad is uh, on tour with them, watching over and helping out and doing stuff like that. And even their PR woman that was there, that she was nice. I didn't catch her name. I, I, I said yesterday, last night, it was just a pew whirlwind. But uh, they were, everybody in that whole camp with them was very nice and everything. But I'll tell you, those guys, those guys gave it their all. You know what I mean? Even, even like I said, you're sitting down, you're like, uh, and you think, man, a lot of bands would be like, oh, this kind of stinks because – you know, the people are cheering. They're all happy and stuff, but it's just like, yeah, yeah. You're sitting in your chair clapping and doing whatever, but, you know, they didn't really want you to get up. And so, anyways, but those guys are like straightforward head. Bang. Oof, it was awesome. So, I'm telling you, um, if you've never seen them or you don't know this stuff, you should go to their website and check them out. Because uh, very, very straight ahead, forward, rock and roll. It's, it's not grunge. It's not heavy, heavy metal. I, I, I kind of put it. More, like I said, kind of that genre like the 80s, but not puff 80s. You know what I mean? Not your favorite band, Poison. You know what I mean? Kind of. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's it's straightforward rock and roll. I mean, if, if if you grew up like us, liking Kiss, if you think of first album, if you think of ACDC, if you, you think of, you know, not fret wankers, you know, there's none of the guitar histrionics or whammy bar masturbation going on. Go see Ingve if you want that. Um, no, they're, they're just putting on a rock and roll show. Um, you know, and rock and roll is timeless. I like the cutting room because it's like a jazz joint from the fifties or sixties. I've been to plenty of jazz yeah. joints growing up because that's what my dad was into, you know, and. You know, some of the clubs, you sit down and you're watching. There was one guy in, like, Liverpool, Victor Brox. You know, not really jazzy. He, he played two trumpets at the same time and all that sort of shit. You know, it's, it is a different sort of environment. But it's good that they're putting on a broad group of artists because they got to do that sort of stuff to survive these days. But you could just see, you know, a Krupa up there, you know, and you're just sitting there having your dinner and a show, you know, kind of uh, atmosphere. It, uh, very New York to me. And I, I don't know whether that's accurate or or not i dig you know and I'm, I'm glad it was weird and different for you because come <laughs> on you, when you see wasp in the sword tooth and and barn you know with sweat dripping from the ceilings it's a different band a different situation yeah i mean um and even kim kim said it last night because kim you know of course kim came with me and uh she was like actually kind of happy because she said she really didn't want to be like in a pit you know it was hot it was sweaty all day we had been there we got there, see, sometime after one. So we parked the car, you know, parked the car in the garage, eh? <laughs> so, but uh, we, uh, you know, roamed around. It was hot and sweaty. Then we had to rechange and trying to, try, uh, and it, I'm telling you, it was, it was pretty muggy and hot. So 
Uh, Kim was very happy that actually that we weren't like in a mosh pit. So, or a pit thing like that. So, and you know what? I'm kind of glad too, because everybody, I think everybody else was feeling the same thing. It was very hot and muggy. So I think everybody was kind of feeling the same. So yeah, I, like, I, I, I saw, I saw the weather the night before and I was like 95 degrees the night before. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm actually glad I didn't go. I mean, I, I just, it wasn't available to do that. And, uh, but when I saw the temperature, I'm like, I remembered the aromas of New York city in that area. The last time I was there when it was hot, and I was like, I'm kind of happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then, and then I'm going to say just at the end of the show, after we're done, we were hanging around, we're finishing uh, sodas because, you know, like, you drink whatever, uh, you know, uh, their dad, like he had like a bag of picks and he's like, he's like, hey, you want, you, 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 you want, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why not? Right. And in uh, chaos, the drummer guy, he, uh, he uh, gave me a stick at the end, man, I played six. So I'm like, hey, cool, man. Yeah, nice. I love it. It was. I'm telling you, it was straight. It is very humble, man. And then, you know, you play. A legend is going to step on the stage with you, right? And they're in their twenties. Just think about it. That's like every kiss is dream thing. There are bands who are out there have been out there forever, and never had like Peter Chris on the stage with them. Just think about it. And they were just so humble about it, bringing them out. And then the crowd goes absolutely crazy. And then. Peter does his thing, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to slow it down. These guys are going to do the rock thing. I'm going to slow it down. And and then he starts. So, and um, we were just like, everybody was just like the awe. You could see the awe in the audience. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> he's just like, ready? One, two, three, and then bingo. Here we go. There you go. So, there, there, there's the next hit single. Put the awe in audience. Put the <laughs> Let's put the uh, in audience. Okay, sorry, Paul Stanley. And I'm tell and I'm telling you, I I've said this before. He still got the voice. Oh damn right he does. Oh my god, it's like I don't want to tell the story yet. I want to wait till the, you know the other part of it. But it's just I, I have to tell. I forget it. We're gonna just go with this. Um, I told. Peter last night that I could shut my eyes at the table, sit there and shut our eyes. And it sounds like you are playing the album, the record album. That's how awesome that was last night. I'm telling you, I know some people are like, Oh man, I want to hear, you know, strange ways or hooligan or, you know, yeah, me personally, I, I would love to hear like dirty living. Cause it's just something that's never done kind of like done before. It'd be kind of cool. But anyways, it didn't matter. Listen to him play stuff off his soul album. Anyways, you know, I just, you just close your eyes. You could just sit there and everybody could close their eyes and you could just hum it in your own head. You know, you're madder than me. And you're just like unbelievable, you know, between him singing and the band and the guy who helped play like keyboards. And I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. He's a nice guy. And he actually, he's played on Ace's uh, solo albums from like Anomaly Up or something. He would touch. Just so many, he was telling me last night when I found out. I'm like, I took a picture of that, and I'm sorry, I forget his name. Ah, I'll have to get his name later. Yeah, so I'll have to ask. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was still, you know, I usually go to, I get up uh, for for something in the morning, so I usually go to bed quite early, and I was just chilling out watching some dark, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine last night, and <laughs> I, I checked in on uh, Ozone, and Ace Scoble had uh, posted a picture from that. And I just seen Peter in front of the, kind of the neon Ace. I'm going to show your your photo here because it's it's real it's a really good photo. So hopefully you can kind of see that. I'll punch. I don't want to use his photo uh, without permission and, and put in a good one. But that's the last thing I saw, and I shared that with a, a couple of folks. And I was like, at that point, it hit me that I wasn't there. And I had an inkling of what he was going to be doing. And I loved that solo album. It's grown on me over the years. You know, when I was 14, I didn't get it. But over the years, it's been an album that I listen to an awful lot when I'm writing. Because it, it's mellow. I love Peter's voice. Puts me in a, a nice place just to be to working on what I'm working on. And he kicked off the, the set with uh, Don't You Let Me Down, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he said and he said and he sounds like peter chris oh I, it's unbelievable and you know what i, I know some people like oh the peter chris album but man if you listen to some of this i mean you listen to a bunch of the 70s music style of that kind of music 
he sounds so 70s. That whole album does sound 70s. So, you know, I, I just, yeah, I mean, it was surreal. I mean, uh, uh, I had a strange story. We were driving down. I had my the plug-in for the, for the phone. I was using the GPS, and I didn't realize it. The phone charger for the phone, for the car one, all of a sudden it started not working. So I didn't know until I almost got down in New York. I had like 10%. And I'm like, oh, my God, we need it back to get out of the city because I don't know that place that great. But then I'm like, ah. Oh. So we had to run front end charges. So we had, so Kim had her phone. So I end up, by the time we had this stuff, so she has some videos. We did record it, but I'm the one recording it from the side. But I didn't want to go live. Like, I, I posted some pictures on Facebook. I think I took six pictures of Peter. Mm -hmm. standing there singing i just wanted to kind of be in the moment you know what i mean because the moment was only gonna last so long <laughs> yeah it, you know yeah. what if if mike bruns there you don't need to record because he'll, he he gets it he posts it you know first thing this morning i did was check mike bruns rock and roll experience and I didn't, boom you know there, there, even... <laughs> there the there the video was i i saw that he was going because a couple of friends that said you had had to bow out and that was kind of like the the the, the passing comment i know mike's going to be there so we're covered uh and thank you mike for sharing that wonderful video you made my morning first thing i did cup of tea sat down uh logged into work to start doing my, my daily uh you know systems checks and uh listening to peter chris and just absolutely fantastic don't you let me down you know that goes back in his history so I, I i talked about it when i did the cutting room review in 2017 but then he goes into a song that you're not that familiar with i i'm actually i am not familiar because it's the strangest thing i have the original album it's right here and i never did they ever release I think that I've looked it up now. Don't they release a brief to like a Japan one of the, of, of the out of control now? Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's been reissued. It was reissued in 98 on CD. It's up on iTunes. So. See, that's the strangest thing. I know I'm weird. I don't have the iTunes stuff. I don't have the iPod stuff. I, I, Kim does have some stuff, but her son sets up for her. We're, I, I guess we're old school or old because I, me, it's, it's CD still to this day. You know, I have my original albums. And then it just like, okay, I'm like, I, I got to listen to all oh, CDs. Oh, they never made a CD. I never thought they made a CD. So oh, yeah. My, I got a spare bad. set. I'll send you them. You know, they're, they're very good. They're, uh, you know, they did, yeah. they did nice work on them. But, uh, you know, so the second song was Words from that album. You know, a really, it's a, a really beautiful ballad. Oh, yeah. And it sounded like they were like in the studio. So it's not just Peter himself, right? It, it's, it's the guys at the backup too, you know? Sister Dolls plus the other guy. I mean, everybody was just like on target. You know what I mean? And just think about it too. Like Sister Dolls have been wherever they've been, LA and Australia. And here's Peter in, you know, where he lives. And when did they practice? They did. When did they, they practice? They, 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 they practiced. They, they did a rehearsal. And, you know, clearly what I like is that Peter's not behind the kit. So he's doing an unfamiliar role because he doesn't do this regularly. This is, you know, how, how many times has he been up on stage, you know, over the past 20 years? Not a whole lot. And also not being behind the kit, not only because of, you know, the recent knee thing, um, but, you know, his his role in the very early days of Kiss, he, he used to shout and all that, you know, to the, and rap with the audience from behind that in like 73. But afterwards, you know, very little crowd interaction other than during Beth, you know, so that's 77. And then through his solo bands, uh, obviously he, he did do, uh, uh, you know, they did acoustic mini sets and all that sort of stuff where he'd be a little bit more of a frontman. But just a traditional frontman standing up there, he's introducing these songs with emotion and stories. It's the emotion that gets me with Peter Chris. That cat wears his heart on his sleeve every single time. And he, you know, last time in 2017, he, he said, you got to forgive to live. These little catchphrases that you, you could just kind of write down as uh, the wisdom of the cat. You know, last night he said something. It, it, nothing, it, it ain't nothing matters but the music. And he's so, yeah. he's, he's so right. He's up there. He's dignified. He's not talking smack. He's not doing anything negative. He's just exuding positivity and, 
happy vibes and he's he's doing percussion he's got castanets and all, all all the little percussive things that add to the song so he's still involved in the music um not just singing and doing all that as well makes it special even if you're not you know don't remember that song from 40 years ago yeah i mean i think me and kim just kind of looked at each other at one point going are we really like seeing this are we like literally did she's on the other side of me and the, the t- we're kind of like and we're kind of like, this is surreal. I mean, it, it sounds so good. It, it was just so, I don't know. It, I, I I can't even explain it. It's like we were not, we were there, but we weren't there. It was like almost an out, out, of, out of body experience. I mean, it was that. I mean, literally, and we wanted to enjoy it. Like I said, I did record with Kim Sarr, but I basically had my arm up like this. And I'm like, like looking at Kim going, yep, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I want to stop recording. I want to stop. I'm not taking any more pictures. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. That, yeah, I'm that, done. that's exactly what I did in 2017. I I shot maybe um, I can't stop the rain video, and I put my 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 phone down. I I, I was doing audio anyway, so I, I got the whole show on my little handheld um, that I use, um, so that I'd always be able to go back and listen to it. I needed to it anyway to remember to write the, my review because I was always planning on doing a fully featured one, so I wanted a full proper ish recording of it. Um, but you know, it's like, put down the phone, put down the camera, put, put it down because you've got Peter Chris up there and you know, he's only going to be doing a, a couple of songs. You don't know how many it may end up being. Um, it, it's all down to how he's feeling, you know, as well. So, you know, just to, just to sit. How was the crowd? I, you know, because how were the people around you? Was he getting the love from the New York audiences? He should. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The, the, the uh, they were giving love, and it started get, it's getting started getting a little bit louder. Even for the even for the dolls, it started getting even as the night went on. It got louder, and louder. You know what I mean? The crowd. I think that you know. I want to say we'll get more into it. I, I see. You know what I mean? Because we're in the tables in the front, and you could hear way way in the back screaming and yelling. Even with the dolls, you know, with their songs and stuff. And you could hear everybody screaming and yelling and way in the back. So I don't know if there was like way standing room in the back and they were just screaming and yelling. But, you know, the place was pretty packed. There was a lot of familiar, there was a bunch of familiar faces that I've seen through the years. You know, everybody, that's another thing too. You go someplace, hey, how you doing? What's up? Hey, you're here again. You know, that kind of thing and stuff like that, you know. And of course, the little kiss cruise talks and people are going on a cruise, not going on a cruise. Where are you going on the first one, second one, all that kind of stuff. You know, the same old, same old. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. So it was, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like the gathering again, you know, like a little, you know, little meetups, these little meetups to meet again. And, and you're just talking about how this stuff, like you say, it's not going to be around forever, you know. And, and uh, as I say, we talk about some other stuff about this this night. I actually mentioned it to them that the, those guys, sister, sister dolls, and the, and the keyboard guy, and Peter, they should go out together. And the kids, the, 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 the sisters looked at me like, what? I'm like, I'm telling you. You guys should go all together, play some of their, your stuff, play some of the Peter stuff, get together and mix it up. I think it would be wonderful. I think it'd be an awesome sell and it would work. And they kind of looked at me and they smiled. They just said, ah, that's kind of, they're like, Hey, that's kind of a neat idea. And I'm like, just smiled. I'm like, I don't nothing. I don't, I just, it just comes off the top of my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> just the ideas. I'm like, yeah, it, it, does, it, does, it doesn't hurt so to make a suggestion. I, I know. Cause it sounded so awesome. It yeah. did. It sounded so awesome. And, and you know, I, I mean, yes, I, me and Kim are friends with Gigi and Peter, right? And I'm not like I posted a couple. Of, I'm not just saying it just to, oh my god to, to kiss ass. I'm telling everybody who was at that show last night, which says the same thing. Man, that was awesome. His voice is off the hook. The, the sister dolls were awesome. Everything clicked. It was great time. Loved it. Worth every penny, nickel, and drive. <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 and same, you know, for me, I've never stopped raving about 2017 because it's still here in my heart uh, of what a special moment it was. And, and again, to, the, to this day, no KISS-related event has topped it, and I, I, I doubt it can. Uh, at this point, you know, even if the the four were to do the, that final show together and for me to, you know, be ripped out of my handcuffs and uh, actually go to it, you know, under duress, um, you know, I, I, again, I don't I don't want those happy memories to be ruined. Third song, um, You Matter to Me. That was really special in 2017 because that was a surprise for Moochie. 
um, yep. who flew in from Japan for that episode, uh, for that, for that event, pardon me. Um, not, not everything in life is a podcast in an episode. Um, so it, it was great for him to, to do that. But, you know, what strikes me is just how well that translates live. It, it really is a good song. And yeah, it was a cover. It was, uh, first, the first song on his solo album, right? If I, if I recall. Eh, don't have my notes. Doesn't matter. Um, but it, that, that's when it really hit me. When he started singing that, and that's when I said, close my eyes. Close my eyes and think I am a 1978. I'm a kid. I got that on my record player playing. And it, it sounds exactly like the record. It was just so mind-blowing, you know? And he's not trying to, and he's not trying to, like, belch out the words and it, it, you, you look at it when you look at the video it's just coming out so naturally and i'm thinking to myself how can a guy do this so well and he's not doing it all the time you know some people say oh because he doesn't do it all the time they, then he's able to do it but don't you I, from for singers don't they like lose it if they don't use it that kind of thing in a way if you don't like really do it as much i don't know but it just I don't. It sounds like he's just been doing this every week, and close my eyes and take me back to 1978, and my little re and my record player. <laughs> yeah, and to correct myself, obviously, second song off the album uh, was "I'm Gonna Love You." Uh, you know, uh, following. You're gonna get yelled at anyways. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Details, <laughs> shmeetails. It it, do, it doesn't matter. You know, the minutia of I, emotion cannot be dissected or turned into an algorithm or equation. It's elemental. You know, the joy and the passion. The, again, the passion is still still clearly there, as much as the the voice is timeless. As is, you know, it 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 doesn't sound effortless because it sounds like he cares about what he's singing and he's not just going to slap together something and show up on stage and hope that someone taped the lyrics to the floor no <laughs> he, he he did his homework again he prepared was, and i'll tell you right now we were that close to the stage and literally the set list was there except for the peter songs it just said had their songs and then it said pc list and then it had the rest of the dolls set list so that's it it just had to that's it there were no words up on that stage there was nothing for peter to look down at we were like right there uh, so there was nothing there <laughs> you know like you said there's no mana there's, there was there's nothing <laughs> unbelievable that's what i'm saying i'm like how long did they practice this stuff? I mean, you know, it's just my, I don't know, it was mind blowing. Well, That's all you I know, he, he's been a musician for 60 years. So, you know, it's like a, it's like a bicycle, you know, any, any time well, they do these fine. things, you, you can, you can bet that the sister dolls came in prepared, you know, oh, and, and it just takes a little bit of meshing to get them all synced back up. They've done it before with each other, so they know each other. It's not like a fresh relationship. You know, they've got a bond there. Um, those guys are, they are musicians. You know, was it, was the pianist Alex? I'm just trying to think of names. It could but, be. Yeah. Uh, it's curly, curly, curly hair. I'm sorry. I think maybe it was Alex. Saltzman? I don't know that was the guy last time. Whatever, you know, we're not going to keep spitballing names. Uh, yeah. So Peter finishes off his uh, his uh, three song yep. three for people who remember Trinity um, <laughs> and, and Peter's number. And uh, the sisters stalls they came back on and uh, wrapped up their set, or was that the end of it then? Nope, they came out and they well they didn't come out. They were just they they didn't go anywhere and then. Uh, you know, they thank Peter and everything else. And, you know, I got, you got to give it to him, man. You, you, you have, like, you're still, it's, for us in America, they're basically still a new band. You know, I mean, they're still a new band anyways. But, you know, I understand, in, you know, in Australia, they want on, like, America's got idol. Uh, America's got talent out that way. And they, I don't know, somebody said they came in second or something like that. I don't remember. But, you know, they're very popular in Australia, but coming here to the States, they are popular for KISS fans, I think. I think that's a big thing, because that's all they probably from the KISS fans, too, you know? 
But uh, they, those guys have a lot of class. I mean, you, you got to think about it. These guys, like, they, on stage, they're playing their hearts out. And next year we have a legend come in with them. And then they just, like, in sync, just go right back to what they were doing. Like, they thank Peter a million times over. And they were, like, calling Gigi, Gigi, Mama. She's our Gigi, Mama, or Gma, something like that. It's pretty funny. They all have it, you know. And they thanked each other. And then Peter said, oh, thank you, these guys. You know, we'll let them do the rocking. Because, like, I think he says, like, hey, I'm old. I can only do X, Y. And then I go, He's, I got to go rest. I got to get off my gimpy knee or something. He, so Peter did make a kind of couple of jokes in between. You know what I mean? But it was all good. Peter started leaving and everybody started changing his name really loud. You know, he deserves it. You know, everything. It's just, and then uh, the Sister Dolls went right back into it and uh, did their set. You know, they finished the last uh, three songs they did. So, um Again, it really rocked out. It was a lot of fun. It was, like I said, it was worth every penny and nickel and drive there. <laughs> yeah. So, so for those of you who missed Peter Chris, he is he's traveling this week. He's going to be attending the Creatures Fest in Nashville. Meet and greets and all that side of thing is sold, sold out, long sold out, way <laughs> sold out, heartily sold out because Peter had to cancel, I believe, a uh, a meet and greet, you know, during the Rona episode out in Nashville. So he's making up and getting back to seeing those fans, but he'll be on stage there on friday um with ace and on sunday with the sisters doll so if you're out in nashville and you're attending creatures fast um you're in like flynn you're, you're gonna see the original catman founding member of kiss along with another founding member of kiss ace Frehley, and bruce kulik will be there of course um you know it, it's going to be a hell of an event uh for anyone who's able to be out there i couldn't do nashville either i just could not this year i thought there was going to be rock and pod going on so i'd hope to do that and then i got family obligations and you know what my family's got to come first i got to go see my mom in england and uh help out with her care there and um my wife and i are going to hawaii so as much as i i regret and I, and trust me i do regret um my mom and my wife are my ladies you know so yeah. um the, the, there's no even second thought about it there are no regrets uh you know when i'm sitting in hawaii with my wife eating that wonderful pineapple you know maybe i'll have my ipod playing uh peter chris album but uh just can't do nashville so i hope he doesn't book any other events this year outside of uh when i'm doing that because that would like be you know i'd sell uh, whatever i could to go see peter you know without a doubt well, he, they going back to the cutting room. He's going back to the cutting room in was it June? Uh, June, June or July. July. I I know it got rescheduled, yeah. and I don't remember off the top of my head which way it went because I'm not going. I, I didn't. It didn't kind of stick in my brain, and 12, my brain's 12 at that to age 13. Now. 12 to 13. Said, go to PeterChris.net. So. Get your latest news and all your official news at PeterChris.net. How's that? Uh, uh, We're gonna so, get hammered on this because we didn't make the date. No, I didn't, I didn't th okay, so July twenty uh, third and twenty fourth date change. Uh, so it's oh, yeah, uh, the, the, it's the meet it's the meet and greet event with Peter there. Um, you know, again, get your details at peterchris.net for all the up to date news. If you got any questions? They have a contact. Send them an email. Get your clarifications officially from them. Don't get it second hand from podcasts uh, or bozos <laughs> like me. Because uh, remember, I'm. Got a very short retention span. That's where I, I write everything down. All right, so back to you in the cutting room. Yeah. So, you know, the, the show ended. People said bye. A, you know, we have, depending on the traffic, but at that late at night, they probably get home by like 4 a.m., which would end up happening. <laughs> so um, when I was talking, you know me, I never talked to anybody. So you know how I am. I, I saw everybody. You're shy. That, I'm shy. You know, I can't hold my own in a room. So I just kind of, you know, whatever. <laughs> so uh, Kim, uh, Gigi walks by Kim and says, hey, uh, I'll be back to, uh, to to get you guys. And uh, so I turn around and we're hanging out. We were sitting at the table, getting ready for the, the doll to come on. And Kim says, hey, Gigi's going to come and get us after. And I said, okay. You know, I, I like, like to say hi to the guy, you know. Say, you know, hi, give Gigi a hug and, you know, all that good stuff and say hi to Peter and stuff. And, uh, you know, but I, you know, I want them to do their thing. I, I don't want to feel like P 
people have, you know, I don't feel that way. You know what I mean? I, I try to explain it. I don't feel like I jump in on people. Oh. No, you don't, you don't, you never, and I'm, I'm the same. We never want to impose on anyone. Yeah, thank you. That That's the special word. The big word, like, you know, big word. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so I said, okay, so, you know, this is the all the day ended. Right? I pe- still talk to people, hang around. And then all of a sudden I got the hand grab and I thought it was Kim and, and it was Gigi, Andy. Like, Kim, come here, come on. I said, okay. So Gigi's pulling me to the front and I grabbed Kim. I'm like, come on, let's go. And we're going, going. We go down the stairs. There's people hanging around down the stairs. And, and then, you know, they ask, hey, is Peter going to come out and sign stuff? And, you know, I don't know nothing. And, you know, they ask me. So we get downstairs and there's a bunch of people hanging around waiting. I'm like, oh, is this the, like are these people going to meet Peter? And I'm like, I, and, and, I don't know what's going on. So I said, uh, and I saw Bill, Bill at the door and Ray, and I, you know, that's, that's that guy. You know, <laughs> so I said, and then like, and then uh, Gigi goes, come on. And, and I'm sitting, standing there in the crowd. I like overhand. She goes, gets to the door and I'm me and Kim, I, like sitting back in the crowd, everybody. And they're like, come on. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Come on, just come on. And I said, okay, okay, okay. So, you know what I mean? So they open the door. They, next note, we go in the door. I go in the door, and I'm like, what, what's up? And they're in the there, and they're in the first. Now, now I'm going to talk as Kim. Now, Kim talks to herself as a third person in this situation because Kim walks in the door, and she goes, oh, my God, I'm in the dressing room. And then she says to herself, shut up. That's what she said to herself. I'm in the dressing room. Loud. I'm in the dressing room. Shut up. Like, you know, <laughs> it's surreal for her because there's two there's two couches there's a couch here and there's a couch here yeah so there's Peter sitting down talking to a gentleman and the sisters are sitting there and there's another gentleman there and there's a there's a teenage kid over here and there's Gigi standing there and there's another guy and they're all talking and me and Kim are just standing there and and Gigi goes hey Andy you gonna be all right and I said of course you know and and she says well you know, this is – Gigi's a class act. I'll tell you this. You know why? I'll t- do it this way. Because I didn't know any of those people in the room except, you know, Peter. And the, the, but there were other gentlemen in the room. I had no clue who they were. She literally said – come over and says, excuse me. Uh, this is such and such from a Drum Magazine. It's like the editor or a guy, the main guy in Drum Magazine. Oh, my name is such and such, and I can't remember the names. I'm terrible. And, and he looks at me and goes, oh, what's your name? And I'm like, uh, you know, what? I'm a, I'm a nobody. <laughs> you know, we're nobodies. We're in a room full of, you know, these people that are somebodies, and we're like nobodies. And Gigi presents us to them like we're special. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by she's a class act. She actually, to everybody, every person that walked in that room, she introduced her. The per- oh, the guy from Billboard uh, Billboard Magazine was there. One of the big guys from Billboard Magazine sitting there. And he said, hi, my name is such and such. And I'm like, hi, how you doing? And this is my wife, Kim, and my name's Andy. And, he did, and I just said, we're just, you know, fans, cuckoo fans. I just said, you know, <laughs> you know. And then Gigi picks on me all the time. You know, she likes to pick on me. She likes to turn me red. And she goes, oh, because this is the number one Kiss fan. I'm like, oh, no, don't say that. I always tell us, don't say that, because people get upset and get, you know, you know how they are. You know yeah. how us. Because everyone's the number one KISS fan. Correct. You know, I, you know, and you know, you know me, and you know Kim, we don't, we don't come off as like that. We don't come off, yeah, number one. Ah, oh, number one. Yeah, but Watch out for we're all number one, but none of us say it. Yeah, no, I'm not, I say, I'm, I never say I'm number one. No way. Absolutely not. So anyway, so she likes to kid around and, get, you know, make these me turns me right all the time when she does that kind of stuff and then uh she says hey uh if peter wants to talk to you guys i said okay but peter was talking to another gentleman which i think was from the drummer magazine or something like that and then peter was talking about whatever they were talking about you know that 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 night you know the other night and then other things that are coming up about them coming back and other stuff and and peter goes hi how you guys doing i said hi peter how you doing you know he, he, he knows who we are and he goes hey I want to give you this. And he hands over a bag and the bag's like, you know, flipped the other way. And he gives it to Kim. Oh, Hey, you, you take it, Kim. So I took it because I, now I have the phone in my hand and I, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take pictures unless somebody says so. I'm not going to start filming. I, I, you know, the respect of, yeah, you don't do that. Doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm friend, it's a friend thing. That's why I look at it. I don't, you know what I mean? 
it's it, past that point of oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god you know it's more of if they say we can i do it uh, okay if not then it's okay with that way so anyways he turns around and says hey we want to give you to this as a wedding gift and we both me and kim are like what and, and he hands us a bag well he actually hands kim the bag and kim pulls it out and i can't believe it talk about kim kim just went what the and just like she's the, you know kim's not even that tall she's starting like creeping down you know like she's gonna pass out and i'm standing there going is that what are you kidding me he pulls out so kim pulls it out i'm like uh uh-uh. I, I and and i still it's hitting me more now today because now it's really settling in now we talk about this and next thing you know they're like and gg turns around and says well we got to give it to the number. We got to give it to the number one fan. Plus, I said number one fan. You know, plus Kim. You know, whatever. So I turn around and she goes, and then Peter turns around and says, "We want to give this to you because we think that you deserve it." And that really hit me because now I'm thinking, "What did I? What do we do to re, to to get this?" You know what I mean? And then Peter said, "Well, if it wasn't for people like you, we wouldn't have food on our table." a car, a house, et cetera. And I was just like kind of blown away about that, thinking, well, yeah, I'm, but I'm only like the, fra- and in the back of my mind, I'm only like a fraction, you know, because there's like millions of kids fans out there, you know what I mean? Or Peter fans, all that. So anyways, he turns around and says, and besides, they rather give, he said, as they said, and Gigi said it, rather give it to you now, and then when, if I not here anymore, and then somebody just gets it. And they're, you know, they can sell it or whatever. He want they want to, Stop. Stop. They want to see the reaction of <laughs> they want to see the reaction. Is that Tink, by the way? Was that Tink barking? Yes. Yeah, hi Tink. Yes. Yeah, I'm right here, Tink. Yeah, it's yeah. me. Remember don't, me? Yeah, don't don't do it. <laughs> if I turn the thing, she probably will bark. So, anyways, I know everybody's like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? So, anyways, I would I'm gonna show this. Peter gave gave us <laughs> The Dynasty Gold album from Canada. I mean, we were just absolutely stunned. And you know, holy I, crap, that is amazing. And, and and I'm telling you, they're like, oh yeah, we it was on the walls, and I could, and and now looking at it more, it just blows my mind because <laughs> it's like, it's got little dents on it, it's got little scratches on. And they're like, oh, yeah, we had it hanging on the wall for years and this and that. And I'm just like, it, it's just so real. And then I said, I don't want to touch it because I know if they touch it, put his hands around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, they grabbed yeah. into And I was just absolutely floored, absolutely floored. And I turned around and I said to Peter, man, you know, we were like, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't really think we deserve this. But you know what I mean? In a way, it's kind of. But and then I turned around and I, and I bowed and I'm like, dude, you 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 know the you know the bow thing, and he and he laughs, you know, and you know he always, you know what he does, he always shrugs off the kiss thing, like he knows he was in the band, he's the former member, all this great stuff, and then he kind of like downplays the kiss stuff, you know how that is, right? He downplays it. Yeah, he's humble. And he's very humble about. It. And then I tell him around, turn around and tell him, because I told him last time he thought of it. I said. You got to remember, Peter, that you are our Beatles. What the Beatles meant to you, you mean to us. So you're our Beatles. And then he huh, did that same thing to me again. He went, huh. So I like, oh, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, I said, I always bring him chocolates. And I gave, you know, got a big, you know, here I am. He gives us a, a you know, a gold certified thing. It's the Canadian one. So if anybody wants to know, it's the Canadian one. Yep. So, because I know people be asking after, oh my God, is it? Good? So, anyways, and I, and I gave him chocolate. You know, he gives us a, a gold platinum album thing out of his own collection. And here I am. Oh, here, here's a bag of mixed chocolates. And he's all happy. And he, so he can watch him with his movies and, and stuff like that. Unbelievable. And then he goes, and then he asked me, what's your favorite? And I says, well, I like any chocolate. Anybody knows me, I like any chocolate. But like Special Dark is really my thing. He's like, Mine too. And I'm like, I'll remember the next time. So I go, this is going to be tradition because I've been doing this now like three or four or five times. So I said, every time I go to see you again, guess what? You're getting chocolate. And Gigi looks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes. 
that that, that that generosity is absolutely spectacular oh, and, you, and just, you know it's it's you know it's that album's birthday today is it really it is the release oh, birthday of dynasty i oh in, in, in reason now now this is the other part now that you brought that up i asked why dynasty and it didn't even hit me why the dynasty because she said they were going through uh stuff and they wanted to pick one out and they were thinking about it but the gg had remembered that i had made a big collage and it took me like a couple of years to finish it basically Which had an ad and a ticket didn't it in your yeah, collage yeah sponge the yep. cup. Because it was kim's very first the first time she ever saw kiss in concert was the dynasty store up in portland maine and the newspaper gave a bad review and she wrote the newspaper and she did the whole thing and so i did and her when her brother took her her brother i brought one of those little disposable cameras and of course there's like 15 pictures from different spots they're on the floor they're on it and one of the things that you know you gotta understand the rose he, he, kim's small so she was always small and she's still small but i mean you imagine being in the, I mean, up there it's general mission the whole time everything's general mission up in that portland arena so imagine in these pictures that you know some of them are a little bit better than others but you know they're starting to fade out i'm glad i started taking things on but i'm like made this huge collage and gave it to her for christmas and get like the one thing that her brother tried to get for her, that she was you know you come and see she was like a little kid she she wanted the sponge and it took me like a year and a half to find a half decent sponge and, and she was like when i gave her, she opened a big collage up with everything because she had got the stick pin because she because we got it and she got the the i was there pin even though they said it was sold the years before they actually sold that at the dynasty shows the leftovers so yep. she got that dish because that's her her mom gave her money that you know oh what would you like she goes oh I, I i just like some pins so her mother gave her some money enough money to buy pins so that's what she bought and then you know you could see where her brother was like they're on the floor to where the pictures taken because they're on this section then they're up close and then they're a little bit further back and they're like all over the place that whole night it was, it's crazy so big collage thing so that's what Gigi remembers me and and they talked about it and that's why we have the dynasty it absolutely and, and that that says everything about how classy they can read they remember that remember the little details that sometimes you mentioned in conversation that you know you, you just mentioned you don't even think you're not mentioning it for any reason other than to tell part of your story of what the band means to you um what peter chris means to you you know it, you, you don't remember because it's just part of you you know that there's no reason no engineering going into it and someone remembers that years later you know that's that's just such an incredible. I mean, I, I literally was emotional just because know, it, it, I, it's such an incredible thing. It, it hits after the fact, right? We're watching everything, doing all this stuff, and it's that, and it, you know, yeah, like you said, they are class acts. He, he's so, and he's got these like little stories. He talks, and he just sits there, nice and mellow, and just talks and stuff. And then, oh my god, and then he's like, oh, come here, we want some more pictures, you know? And then he goes. And then he wanted to kiss Kim on the cheek, and, like, and, uh, and she's like, "Take pictures." So I take, so there's pictures of Peter ki kissing G, uh, kissing Kim on the cheek while she's holding the, you know, holding this thing. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I'm taking pictures, going, "Jesus, this is, this is, this is, you know, it's surreal, man." Because like, growing up as a little little kid, you know, oh my god, look at these guys on their album covers and all this stuff. And now I'm actually sitting in a room, and the guy, and he, they just handing me, they just handed this over. A gold album, personally. Yeah. I was like, "What?" The <laughs> well, to think to think you guys got home at the hour you did, and Kim went to work. She's going to be emotionally shattered tonight. You know, just just hold that in, in front of her, and she'll oh. melt uh, into yeah. sleep, probably into a just a, into a into a cat like coma. There you go. Yeah. How cats I, can I, sleep. I, yeah, and I don't think it's actually sunk into her yet. I think when she gets home, yeah, she even said, "Where is it?" I'm like, "It's on the other side." Was it real or was it a dream? <laughs> yeah. That's what she said. She goes, oh, and I have to go to work today. I mean, it was like, you know, two hours. There they go. You know, we got home at four. She up at six. And gone. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's one hell of I, I just want to grab something to show. Um, since, it's, since it's right behind me on my little wall, uh, this is one of the, the Dynasty sponges. Ken 
Voice of Reason was kind enough to gift me this, um, you know, years ago. So it sits up on my wall, you know, and that it's in perfect shape um, as yeah. well. But they they are nice little commemoratives of that tour. I, I wasn't, I, I was barely in the country at that time, um, so I, I didn't know squat about Kiss at that point. The Beatles were the Beatles for me at that time. Um, you know, great great story. Let's, uh, you know, but, you... I know you want to move on, but one thing. I, I, I know they might watch this and see this, but JG, we love you. You are awesome. And so is Peter, both you. You guys, they do. And I'll tell you right now, they don't say a lot all the time, and you know, they, but they do a lot of things that a lot of people don't know for special people at special times. And I'm telling you, awesome. Very awesome. So I'll leave that. We love you, JG. And Peter. <laughs> yeah, th th there's a, there's a lot of positivity coming out of that couple that's not trumpeted on Twitter, that's not uh, advertised and broadcast. You know, the d the good deeds or the good things that you do in life don't always need to be headlines, and that's um, you know, it, it's what makes them so classy. That uh, you know, they continue to do a lot of good, make fans happy and uh just be class acts so let's wrap up with one of the other events that you've attended recently and we're gonna yep. flip from chris alive to kiss alive um you went to <laughs> kiss's makeup date in hartford which got canceled because of a incoming hurricane it was originally postponed by a day um last year what was it september i think was the original date or october or whatever uh it doesn't matter <laughs> Yeah, that was, that, that's irrelevant minutia go to kissconcerthistory.com to check out the details <laughs> of it blah blah um you know so they they were doing a short run after south america the stage presumably and i don't know this for a fact is in shipping or was getting shipped to europe because they've got a run starting there um in 10 days now less than 10 days so um, they put together a pretty interesting alternative stage using tr hanging triangles. They brought back the impressive cats uh, from the from the Destroyer tour that once adorned um, Peter's drum throne. Uh, but they've uh, made a, a new set that looks slightly different. So Hartford, tell us about that. Uh, you know, like you said, the show got postponed. Wow. Uh, as you, I think I might have talked about this on, on here or not, but uh, Ace Freely had announced the show, and the date was the same day as the Kiss show, but the Kiss show wasn't reannounced until after the Ace show. But we have been to, so, I, I've been over 150 Kiss concerts, so now I might be over 160 at this point. I got to catch up on all this stuff since like '76. So at this point, it doesn't matter where I sit or go. Or go. I just want to go in it just to have fun. You know what I mean? If that's all I mean. I don't need to spend like a lot of money anymore. To like, I've been down in the front, second, third, fourth, everywhere. Seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousand, whatever. You know, it doesn't bother. At this point, it just doesn't bother me anymore. I just go and have fun. So we decided. I had bought the Ace tickets because you're supposed to play Toad's Place on May fourteenth. What happens? I buy the Ace tickets and then Kiss, they re announce everything. They made it the same day, the 14th. And I just went, oh, after all these years, near the, all near the end, this is all kind of coming to the end, stuff and everything. Now we got two shows, same night, within half hour each other <laughs> on this same. So we decided, well, I, I talked to Kim. Kim says, oh, well, we've seen Kiss so many times. We want to save the money. We're going on a cruise. Da -da -da. Let's let's. It, we only had lawn seats. We had bought the, like the lawn seats were like twenty bucks. So it's supposed to be me, Lisa, and <clears throat> my friend Lisa and Kim. So we decided to drop the lawn tickets, keep the ace ones because they're up front in the gold circle, in Toad's Place, legendary. And then they said we had it till February eighteenth to cancel all the kiss tickets. So we gave them back a week and a half later. What did they do? They postponed the A show, and I'm like, oh, my God, in the middle of the week or Wednesday or Thursday. So now I can't go to A show, so I have to give those tickets back, which stinks. So then I'm like, oh. So then we're like, okay, we'll go back to KISS, but we'll wait for the weather because now the weather, never know, whatever. So we waited, 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 and then Live Nation came back out with the lawn tickets again and then bought the lawn tickets. So we ended up going along, me, Lisa, and Kim. 
Hi, Lisa, because I know you're going to watch this. <laughs> yeah. So, hi, um, Lisa, because I, yeah. I saw I saw her in the photos that you, you shared online of, of that. Just out of curiosity, uh, what were the long tickets going for now, the days? Uh, well, they had that Live Nation. You buy, I think it was instead of 20 to a 25, and that's with the taxes and everything. So it was 25 for that's, the lawn. Th come on, 25 to see Kiss? Yeah. And it's different out it's different in Hartford if I'm on the stand down there. It's like one of the biggest amphitheaters yes. that has lawn. Not it only has seven thousand five hundred seats underneath the pavilion. The the rest of it's lawn and the whole place hurts thirty thousand. So think about it. That lawn is huge and it's so wide that you don't have a problem seeing. It's not like a Swedish center in Mansfield Mass where if the thing's lower, and if you're out in the grass, and actually they put more seats on the grass, and it's harder to see. You know what I mean? And they had big, giant screens and everything else. And so that's that. And, you know, I luck again. It had been cool weather, and then what happens? It turns about 90. And in the humidity, it was, uh, and then it was supposed to rain. So, but I had only, like, sprinkled. We got lucky. And I said, well, maybe I am going to dress up. Maybe I am. Well, I went for it. I told Cam, you know what? If I get soaked, I get soaked. Let's, I'm going to just do it. So I dressed up. Thank Mechen. You know, everybody knows Mechen who does, who does awesome work on doing costumes and stuff like that. Or I call outfits with the war paint. <laughs> so, uh, you know, did the love gun thing, started taking, but it was strange. We're out in the parking lot. People were looking at me, but nobody wanted pictures. I was like, wow, this is kind of weird. And then all of a sudden, it was like one person asked, floodgate, or here we go, floodgates. We give you money, give you money. You're going to pay for pictures? No, no, no. Just take pictures. You know, bang, 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 take pictures. And it was funny trying to get to the, then I have to go to the bathroom. There's this stuff. And I'm trying to get to the bathroom. The, the porta potty's outside, right? I'm literally like 15 feet from I'm trying to get it. Then all of a sudden, all these people want pictures. They wouldn't let me. I'm just, just let me get to the line. <laughs> I just want, you guys can take all the pictures you want, but just let me get to that line. Oh my God. It was hilarious. So next, you know, we get in this and that. And, uh, We'll look. Oh, actually, I know. I'm going to get yelled at because, oh, you shouldn't be doing it. But anyways, uh, they were selling bootleg T-shirts outside. I don't know. Whatever. So I know people. some people get mad. Some people don't. So anyways, they had like three of them. But I mean, they're like 10 bucks, and I don't care. I got them. I don't care. We got them. So this is like you would see. But then this is Kim's because she wanted the one with all the dates on it with the main because she's from Maine. Da, 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 had all the dates on it. And then. I guess a lot of people wanted this one because what people ask it, I guess, left and right online is it's like a bluish color. A lot of people wanted, like, the bluish color. That's a quality it, issue. <laughs> probably. But it's, it's a bootleg. Kind of yeah. But they only had, like, the six or seven dates on the back, the ones that they were making up in, in the festival. Right. And then, and, then, and then they had, like, a tie-dye one, which I don't want a tie-dye, so... It yeah, is. because, because yeah. come on, ten bucks in the park. You know, I, I'm not going to promote bootleg stuff, uh, right. but there is a reason why it sells, and that is called look at the merchandise prices once you're through the gate. Well, could could I mean I think it, cause Gene admitted that, or Gina bought or didn't one of them admit even in the '80s they made deals with with the bootleggers. They were getting some of the cut of the money. That was I don't know. I, I thought I don't, I, I, I don't know. You wonder sometimes these days with the DVDs and shit being sold online uh, in some of these auction sites and you know bootleg LPs and all the all the the shit. Whether deals are have been cut, but you know um, yeah. you know kissonline.com if you want to buy official Kiss merchandise. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so uh, you know we go there and you know like now. We're inside. No, we're not even inside yet. So this is this is like one of my biggest beefs. I can't stand the phone tickets. I am so over that. What is the issue of getting hard tickets? Somebody says, well, there's a lot of counterfeits out there. These people are getting so good and this and that. But it's a problem when I can't get my tickets up, and this is not the first time. I, we, me, I took Surprise Kim. She, she always like Chicago too. She like you know Kim likes a variety of music, so like way right. You just hear some of the stuff. Kim's got so much of what. So anyways, and, and those tickets were cheap, and they played on me. I couldn't get those tickets to come up. I had a pain. While I was down in Hartford, I'm like, I can't get the tickets up. I'm ready to go through the gate. I can't go through the gate, so I have to go to customer service. I'm standing there, hand over my phone. They're looking at it. They're like, well, log on. I log on. This that. Go think the thing keeps spinning, spinning. 
we'll shut this off, shut that off, turn this back on, shut this off. They're saying it's 20 minutes later, I'm still standing there, and they can't even figure out. These are the people who can't even figure out. I'm like, here, here's my phone. So underneath the plexiglass, da, da, da. now they got to pull over a manager to, for trying to figure it out. And at that point, at sooner or later, like 25 minutes into it, they're like, forget it. I'm like, yes, there are three lawn seats. You say he says lawn, but it, they're just lawn seats. Somebody just print them out. Finally, they, some guy went in the computer, and the guy's like all mad, you know, because he's mad because more people are doing the same thing. They're coming up. They can't get everything. So anyways. They finally print out high copies. Yay! After all that, you get hard copies. I don't mind paying the extra five dollars to get a hard copy mailed to my house months before. Please, people, fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, I know technology still not right, right? So we get in, and a guy comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, is your name Andy?" And I always say, when they say that, yeah, I always say the same thing. Depends who's asking. Yeah, I always say it. Because, hey, some people love you, some people don't. That's how it goes. I, I, you know, I'm me, I'm me. That's it. You like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. That's the way it goes. So, he, this, this guy starts talking to me. He goes, oh, my God. He, so he goes, you're Andy, right? I said, yeah. And he says, man, I don't have Facebook. I don't do this. But he goes, I listen to the podcast. And I go, oh, which one? He goes, kiss FAQ and kiss, you know, look, it's rock and roll. And I go, oh, what's your name? He goes, my name's Al. I go, how you doing, Al? He goes, so, how you doing, Al? What's up, Al? Because I know he's going to watch this. Cause he, uh, he's hey, Al. Always... Yeah, hey, Al. Thanks a lot for, uh, you know, hitting up Andy. And also, thanks for listening to the shows. We appreciate it. Yeah. He, he was like, he's like, I don't have Facebook. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm like, cool. So, we start talking, right? And he's like, take the, then he wanted to take a picture of everything. And then we're talking. And then, of course, I'm getting more pictures. Kim and Lisa are getting like, ah, they want to get away from me. <laughs> Because everybody's like, hey, <laughs> they're like, you know, like, like, oh, can you take a picture for us? You know, because they're taking a picture. You know what I? You know, they're always looking. Somebody's always yeah, looking for something. They went to, to see Kiss, not become photographers. Yes, yes, that's that. After, after a while, so they're like scooting way off. They're like hundred yards, right? And I was in it. And next, you know, there's like those one of those, you know, concrete things there with bushes and things. And there's Al sitting there, like all by himself. And I walked over to him. I'm like, hey, Al, what's up? He goes, ah, nothing. And I'm like, are you ever, like hanging out by yourself? He's like, yeah. He goes, I don't, I don't really have any Kiss fans around me. And I says, oh. I'm like, well, you want to hang with us for the rest of the night or hang out if you want? Oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, dude, this is what it's all about. Yeah. He goes, well, yeah, I went on a Kiss cruise and I'm like, but I never, I never recognized him. So him and his wife had gone on a Kiss cruise. I don't know how many. I can't remember how many he said. But he says, yeah, he'd been on a Kiss cruise or one or two or whatever. So he starts talking to me, and he's got a, a laminate, a big one, and he flips it over. Now, this is when it gets surreal, dude. This is when it hits, okay? Not only going to see Kiss, and then he tells me, he goes, yeah, this is my wife. She passed away in 2018. And, and, and he's like, I'm like, wow. Whoa. He's like, he's like, she would kill me if I didn't come see Kiss tonight. So I have her in a picture in his laminate. And he's walking around with it with a lamb. I'm like, oh my god, dude. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. That that's got a that's a killer, right? I'm like, oh my god. And I'm like, dude, come hang around with me. All just just come hang. So we all went up, went out up the stairs, da, 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 hanging out. So it is Lisa and and Kim. They put down the thing. They're sitting on the grass, and is And I'm like, I can't go on the grass because the grass, you know, everything's a pitch. <laughs> if I go on the grass with those boots and it's a little misty, I'm gone. You're gone. You're out. <laughs> Yeah, you know I'm taking some people out while I'm going down the hill. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to be like Ace on stage. You're going down. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm not just going to go down. I'm going to roll down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like, uh, you know, I'm going to be a goner, right? So I'm like, so I'm sitting back, and me and Al are uh, uh, shooting the shit, talking to each other, and then Kiss comes on. Bang. And usually I'm like, I don't want to say usually, I'm always just, ah, yeah. Me and Al were having discussions, like while we're watching, but we're we're having discussions, but we're not looking at each other all the time. But we're having discussions while the Kiss song's playing. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this happened. Oh, this brings me back to my childhood. Oh, this brings me to this. This brings me to that. Oh, do you remember when he did this? Oh, look at it. Oh, it was just so. It was wild. You know what I mean? And of course, we were talking about the stage. You know, the stage wasn't as big. You know, it had a, had a like, the hectagon kind of thing with the spikes. 
for the you know for the you know for the what do you call it computer kiss sign and all that stuff yeah thing was wide open more wide open you know they had the, they came down those little triangle things and stuff like that and uh it, it was limited without without any doubt and that's not a criticism they did the best they could oh, under the oh. circumstances to put together a good stage show i think it worked yeah but i think you know what i think was a little bit odd they have the cats now right which is cool but then the serpent's gone well it's probably in it, that's probably in a container from south america heading to europe i think they so need what? to get they need to get a second one in case one gets nicked yeah but why why did they just why didn't they put the cats that are new the cats in with in the shipment well, i don't think the cats were in south america i think those were recently made i don't know i don't know the full details yeah, on yeah, I know, but what, <laughs> what you what you uh, ship, want to ship the cats on to? So then you have the cats and the new serpent. I, I don't know if the cats are part of uh, the end of the road staging. So uh, I, I think they they may have been made recently and were utilized in order to add um, some staging, you know, to make it more interesting. Because you know, come on, it's Kiss. Then you know, these days they're not going to just go out with a, ro a wall of amps behind them. You know, they got to have some uh, toys for people to, like us to comment about on podcasts. So, you know, just it's a substitute. Almost, yeah, it almost reminded me, if you took the cats away kind of in a way, it almost reminded me of the uh, 2016 Freedom to Rock kind of tour. Like mm. the open, like more open, wide open, you know. You know, the songs are the songs. You know, we wish we changed some. It is what it is. It is what it is. There's nothing, you know. It was funny though when uh, I did notice. Maybe I missed it when it does pass, but it's funny at one point when Gene's doing the God of Thunder, all of a sudden he does like the roar. He goes ah, like this, his mouth wide open, does the roar, and he used Godzilla. Hmm. You know, the, you know the Godzilla, you know, from the movies. <laughs> so Gene goes like this once. He's like. And so oh, yeah. they get the, the sound of Godzilla. They, yeah, I thought that was like, hey, that's kind of neat. That's like, there you go. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's you know? one of the piping and the sounds from the Phantom of the Park. <laughs> that'd be out of here. Actually, that'd be kind of classic. So, um, I mean, it is what it is. I, I know there's really not it's much a, more no, to get into. No, it, it, it isn't just what it is. It's still a Kiss concert, and you're, you, you just <laughs> nailed what a Kiss concert's about. It's communion at the Electric Church. It's you're getting together with people that sometimes you see in passing every now and then. You mentioned that with the cutting room. You bump into people, and you're like, it's Bronx nod time. Um, you know that you know these people. You know who they are, or you know them from Facebook, and or you know you pass them in another life. Um, you know it, it's there there's your respect and but you also made it clear what it's really about without sitting on the grassy knoll of hartford um you know with a guy who's there after losing a loved one who would have wanted him to be there and talking about your shared but different kiss experiences in life and where these songs are a soundtracks of the life that is what seeing kiss is about more than anything that is going to be the thing that is timeless you know 25 or 30 years from now <laughs> god willing still around you know when there's a tribute band up on some stage doing a thing of hits i'll be like one of the grumpy old men from the muppet show go you know <laughs> leaning over to the person behind me you know uh, and saying hey that, well you know what this song means to me and he's like no you idiot they're playing love gun um you know so <laughs> You know, that that is what it's about and that's what i do, did on the cruise with people as well it wasn't necessarily watching the shows it was talking about those shared experiences that make us you know that have been a soundtrack to our life well here's the thing too it hasn't hit me or kim i don't know if it's hit lisa yet you know that that's now supposed to be the last time they play hartford which is part of new england so that would be the last show in new england if that's what really happens but it hasn't hit us really yet because I think because we're going on Kiss Cruise, the first one had sold, but now it's actually the second one, so I'm calling it 12. So it's all Kiss Cruise 12. So we're doing that, and then wherever the last show or shows are going to be, which every slate is going to be somewhere in New York, so at some point. But So I guess it hasn't really hit us because they've been here for so long, and they gave it so much History, history, you want to call it. It's so much fun and laughter. You mean, you got a band that's been around for 50 years. You know, you're not going to love everything. That's the way it is. Even Gene said it. If you don't like it, I get it. 
You love it? You love it. You don't? You don't. That's what it is. There's no way that we can love everything they do. You know what I mean? It's just the way it is. Or hate everything they do. And so, I mean, you're going to have up and down just like everything else. But, again, the, even Al and I, stick, you know, me and I, you know, we're talking about like, man, these guys, like, they're in the 70s. And, yep. And I'm like, they're up there. Yep. And they're still doing what they're doing. Yep. And then even now when we've been – it hit me again because when we went back to the car after my feet were killing me, we were trying to get out of more pictures in the parking lot. And people was, oh, my God, that was awesome. That was awesome. There was some, a couple of younger girls, not, I just say younger, you know, because they're younger than me. Guys. And they were talking about, and they were like, that was the best show we've ever seen. And I was just like, hmm, interesting. She goes, those guys are in, what, their 70s? And well, I was like, yeah. She goes, We've seen bands way younger than them, and they these guys kick their asses. She goes, this, she said, and I was like, hey, this is this is the kind of stuff that's when it kind of hits you. You know what I mean? Because we're so like, we're used to it. We see it. We see. We're it. so <laughs> old. <laughs> yeah, we're so old. But the, the, listening to younger fans or somebody that's younger and saying, oh, we've seen bands that are younger bands that are coming up and they don't even move anything like these guys. And these guys are in the seventies, got all this gear, and they're kicking their ass. Those guys can move, you know what I mean? So I'm like, wow, you know, this is these are, when you hear this kind of like little stuff here and there from different perspectives of people, you know, it, it's very it's yeah, it's the reality is and relative. Was, yeah, and it was a lot of mixture, and, and that's another thing about that show too. Lot, now being on the grass, it's a lot different than being down below because when you're down below and you're looking forward. You, yep. you can't see when you're farther back and you're looking down. Yeah, but when you when you got twenty five dollar tickets, the whole family can go. Yeah, but you can see the crowd. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can see the reaction. I can see the side mm -hmm. of of like the crowd cheering. You know, they're turning on their phones for the lights, and they're you know all cheering. You can hear the different sections going, and then you can see the the different generations walking around. You know, the whole different. So it's not like you're going to like. I don't know. You or a show, and I mean, does is Kiss one of those bands besides a few, a few handful that bring in so much different people? No, because people it, want to see them. It happens to quite a few bands when they get to kind of that stage in their career that you've got a, a broader swath of the population, generations of fans, and their grandkids and their children, and in some cases their great grandkids coming, you know, being brought to the show, you know, in, in their baby buckets. So, you know, that's the great thing about still being around at this stage. I want to end this episode. I, I, I got to end this episode, but I want to end that it on a, just a piece of Gene Simmons wisdom that really does speak well that you've touched on with your story about Al and Peter Chris touched on in uh, giving you guys um, the wonderful award. Every day above ground is what you make it. You know, we're not here forever. And to savor these memories is... You're lucky. You're lucky you're able to just drive from New England, you know, from Boston down to New York City and to Hartford and to this and that because the West Coast is, you know, not as easy to do these sorts of things. I did San Diego. I had to run down to San Diego for a day and driving 500, and f what is it, 525 down and back, that just knocked me out. I don't want to do that. Even Even the sister doll said the same thing. It's a good day to be alive. Mm -hmm. They have their song. But in, in, you know what? It, it's true. Man, it's some of the stuff that everybody's been through, hard times and all this stuff. It's crazy. It, it is. Who so. hasn't been touched by something over the past few years? Remember that <laughs> when you get your chance to go see a concert or to go see that thing or to go to Creatures Fest or whatever, grab that ring because... It may not swing by you again, so. All right, that means you're getting on the Kiss Cruise. <laughs> Fuck, no. 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 Uh, I tried. I tried, folks. I tried. Once, once is it. All right, that's it. That's Andy's uh, recap of uh, the cutting room and Hartford and just uh, talking about some of the philosophies that we seem to pick up, you know, from these guys and what they share with us over the years. So thank you to, to Peter for you know, being out there to, to yeah, be willing and take advantage. Those of you who are going to 
Creatures Fest of enjoying every moment there. I'm looking forward, forward to the reports next week of that and uh, look forward to maybe doing a recap episode on that. We do have people attending and hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully everything goes well. So Neil and team, you know, thoughts are with you for a smooth event as well, because it's got people like Peter involved in it. Um, you know, there we go. That's it. Andy, myself, we're out. <laughs> Catch you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.